Alright, so from this corner where Grant's hiding, Grant from the Garden of Eater, all the way down, like 40 of these tubs, an entire greenhouse with a turtle hatchery, more IBC totes that go along the fence, and each of these are over 275 gallons in capacity, all with hundreds if not thousands of Neocaridina shrimp and soon to be Caridina shrimp and a house full of thousands of Caridina shrimp and dozens of species of shrimp as well as this pond, this series of ponds, the beautiful koi that are in here, the turtles that are in here, and it's all managed by two people, Grant and Shelby Eater of GardenofEaterShrimps.com. Let's take a look at what the heck is going on in this beautiful wonderland they have. And this entire place is managed by these two while they manage a family with two kids and a house and everything that's outside, yet they manage to keep tanks all over. Some of them are even aquascaped. They've always got new projects going and they even keep some reptiles as well as the shrimp, as well as the native fish. Always something new going on over here. It is quite the honor to be here. And I have to thank their local fish club as well for flying me down and letting me uh, speak with them about the nerdy history of fish. Hey, how's it going? It's Grant. And Shelby. And welcome to the Garden of Eater. Come check out our 300 and plus tanks. And 50 pawns. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, just there, you think there's a few tanks? There's a whole lot more to see. And shrimp lines you guys couldn't imagine. So get ready for an awesome tour with two awesome people here at the Garden of Eater, shrimps and fish. All right, so we're here and we're looking at everything from pandas to shadow pandas to King Kongs to a fishbone pattern or herringbone pattern. Um, sometimes I've even heard it called skeleton. And then we've got uh, pintos, which have dots on their head. We've got, if it's got more than about nine dots, then sometimes they're called galaxies. So you know the history of all these different lines and you know, you can get red versions, you can get yellow, black, blue, I mean everything out there with these different phenotypes can, can kind of end up. But how do you name something if you don't know its history? Like how, how does the, the Caradina hobby describe things then? So a lot of it is phenotypes. Like we already talked about the Missouri phenotype, yep. which is the, the head being a different color than the, yeah. the rest of the body. So that, that's like, for some pintos, that's how you describe those. But with these ones, like, mm -hmm. you either got fishbone or you don't. Okay. All right, so the fishbone itself is a trait that comes from the serrata gene. And then... Which is basically a tangerine tiger, or a tangerine... Or aurora. Okay, or All aurora right. blue. And then, so, the basically the difference between a fishbone uh -huh. and just a regular galaxy pinto is going to be the the back going down the back line going down in the stripes but in order for it to be a galaxy fish bone it has to have nine dots and the fish bone pattern so, if it doesn't have nine dots it could just be a fish bone it could just be a tie tie b with a pinto stripes but there is there's certain people that categorize them as uh, Asian pintos or German pintos. So these could never produce German pintos. Okay, so what is a German, like anything, like is this true for other phenotypes or just the pinto? When you say it's a German caradina of some sort, um, does that, what patterns does that apply to that the Germans specifically bred something completely different than the Asians? So like, there's like, two to three different waves of pintos okay. that I go by. The first wave that really comes out is the German lines. Okay. So you've got the spot head pintos, the body pintos, and the zebra pintos. Okay. And then those ones were out for a while, and then next thing you know, down the line, you've got galaxy pintos. And what I think actually happened was the Asians got their hands on the spot head pintos and then crossed them with the tangerine tigers because the tangerine tigers, they breed so fast Yeah. that within two or three generations, you were able to get something that looked like a pinto but had the back line going down the back. And then from there, they refined more and more dots before, so they can say, all right, well, our 
Pinto has more dots than the Germans, so now they can call it a new line, name it something else, and slap that fancy price tag on it. And does the color of red, like these are kind of like a red wine almost. Yeah. Like, does that make it a red wine Pinto or so, anything? Or, I mean, like, how do you categorize those, that? In order to make you have to use red wines and then a Caradina Maria Tiger. So most likely okay. it's uh, Super Tiger to get the, the dots on the head. Okay. And then the Asians, what do they do for their their Pintos that's different than that? Like, they, they, don't, they took a longer time than the Germans, right? So I think what they did was they just took what the Germans did and then they tried to mass produce it faster and they found that the uh, Tangerine Tigers add in different phenotypes and different morphs and stuff like that. Not only that, but they could have been trying to create something different. So the way to do it is if you know that they're, the Germans are using these tigers, but in Asia we have these, and they cross and they try to replicate, but they couldn't make it exactly what they found is they made something different. So I don't know exactly which one it is, but it's most likely one of those two. Okay. And speaking of something different, what do you call them when they have bright orange eyes like that? So these are the red lapis, and... The, and a red devil, is that what yep, that is? that's okay. correct. So what basically happened here is somebody took the orange-eyed black... Uh, or, no, I'm so sorry. It's okay. The orange-eyed... Uh, I was right. Black tigers or orange-eyed blue tigers. And then crossed them with the Taiwan bees to try and make orange-eyed Taiwan bees. It wow. takes several generations because anything non-orange-eye yeah. crossed with orange-eye is going to end up normal eye. If it doesn't it's have recessive. orange eyes in the genes, you will not get orange eyes from the cross. So a lot of people think it's as easy as taking this shrimp and then crossing it with a, a non-normal eye and you're gonna get like 25% orange eyes. That's not true. Okay, so the orange eye is also, with price, with genetics and time, a lot has gone into that too because you have to keep that trait. And you kind of have to pick Unless you get the perfect morph popping out and you can get that shrimp and it has exactly everything you're working towards, you really have to pick a trait at a time, get that nailed down, and then kind of work on the next trait, yeah. remembering what is, what is uh, dominant versus what is recessive, right? Yeah, and then culling, you, you've got to stay yeah. on top of that because like after a centimeter in size, the males can start to breed. Right, and right. you get one male breed and then you, you can set your whole project back an entire step back or two. Wow. Here we have a giant wall yet again. You thought it was a fish when Shelby was showing us around. What else is going on in here, Grant? So basically we used to have our TV here in the center and then a bunch of tanks on the outside and it's gone through a bunch of different phases but as you go through and you evolve through fish keeping and, and building new racks and stuff like that you kind of got a blueprint set up in mind and you're like what's the ultimate goal here and I kind of was like how many tanks can I fit in one area the goal <laughs> was a hundred if I had to go up and over the doorway you yeah. we were willing to do that Wow. But we both kind of agreed it was better off to put them up top, even though it's really hard to access in. Shelby's yeah. He's like, hey, let's do a tank where we never do a water change and see how that goes. Well, that one volunteered. Gotcha. And that's where the ladder comes in also, though, for these yeah. higher tanks. Eventually, we might install like one of those like sliding library ladders. Oh, that, that would cost. be cool. Yeah. But we are also building the 90 10-gallon tank stand right here, right where we are right now. So I don't know how much slide room we're going to have when there's 90 10 gallon tanks right here as well. That is bonkers. We're building a room inside of a room. So this is the first wall. We kind of don't have tanks there yet. There will be tanks in front of the window. Some nicer aquascape tanks. Kind of get the ones off the counter in the kitchen. But 100 10 gallon tanks, I figured that would give me enough room to play with plenty of my projects and stuff like that. I am renting them out to Shelby. She doesn't know it's a little <laughs> bit expensive. It's like a hundred dollars per day per tank. Right, you know how fair. many she's got there. So <laughs> hey, she she's working the bills. You know, yeah, it, it, I hear you. It, so. so as I look closer, I mean, I thought we found all the rooms of shrimp and of things, but yet again, you've got those are more of Shelby's galaxy. Beautiful fish. looking shrimp all over in all like half of these tanks so what's going on in here what's the rhyme the reason so caradine out top okay a because of the water parameters and i flood a lot so oh okay if 
hard water were to fall up here and then get into my Caradina tanks on it wouldn't be a big deal right so the GH from the Caradina tanks falling into my Neo Caradinas isn't a big deal that makes a lot of sense I would probably wouldn't have thought of that until it happened and ruined everything but there's no uniformity it is kind of like I wanted shrimp bought shrimp I needed to move shrimp move shrimp Shelby took tanks for fish so it's kind of a mixed match the only thing is the Neo tanks are on the bottom now, are these fancy tigers here? Those are calcios. Calcios, okay. And what makes it a calcio? Um, I don't know exactly what in the breed, but technically for calcios, they tend to have like color to the head and then stripes going down the back, kind of like a pinto. They're beautiful. Um, but I also have blacks. Like, oh, you did it. I was like, oh, well, you came to the right guy. How much are they? And I was like, why didn't you show me these last night when I bought the pygmy quarries and all the other stuff? But, yeah, I, I, I got the nudes. You ended up with nudes. So, I mean, as much as you go to sell things at events, you end up bringing back quite a few things, it seems, also. Yeah. So, I just want to show some of the various... Those are black calcios, so you like the red calcios. Those are more blacks. Wow. I tried to show you blacks, so and I was like, oh, I don't yeah. know exactly. I have a couple of them going on. Wow. You can see that one's pregnant right next to yeah. oh, that one. Look at yeah, that. and so even you do actually lose a little track of some of these tanks sometimes. Huh? I just got to look at them for a second and right. know where they're at. Now, what is this? Because this rock is so new. Those are super black crystal shrimp. Super black crystals with, are these blue-eyed orange? Those are orange-eyed blue tigers. Or orange -eyed. <laughs> and then I've got the royal blue tigers next to them. Those. Wow, look at all those. Pretty looking shrimp. Look at them eyes. Those, they look, are, those are one of my favorites. And I know Halloween, they're going to be stunting. Yeah, I mean, they're a little creepy in a beautiful way. Oh, yeah. And, again, we've just got more. So this is like a future project that I'm working on with the orange-eyed yellow King Kongs and an orange-eyed red tiger. I'd like to make some yellow and red shrimp. Wow. With orange eyes. Very cool. So there are so many different varieties along this wall of shrimp as well as throughout other tanks in this place there's my dr pepper by the way and you guys need to just tune into their channel to find out more about this more about the genetics and the hard work and the decades that, or the decade that this guy has spent almost a decade almost not on even. this yeah it's crazy so next we need to tackle a different part of the world a little more south of where most of those shrimp are from but shrimp nonetheless Awesome nonetheless, and snails nonetheless. What do we have going on over here? So this whole rack is set up for harder water. We've got the Neocaridinas up top. Okay. And then once it gets down a little bit lower, it gets really hard. And also, these are the only tanks in the entire house that get heaters for the shrimp. Uh -huh. They might have some heaters for the fish, but these guys are uh, 80 to 84 degrees in temperature. These ones are the easiest. These are the Malala. They're like the Neo Caradina of the Sulawesi shrimp. They're kind of ugly in coloration, but they breed like rabbits. And can they peak at the top? They can take a wider variety of parameters. Very they can cool. can definitely get you in one way or another. All right, so these are the Malala? Yeah. And they're from, yeah, they do really blend in there, but they are an interesting, they're, they're very different than actually like a, a Neo Caradina wild style or something. So, people should give them a shot if they're keeping really hard tanks from Sulawesi and uh, the Indonesian islands. What else do we have here? So there's like five Harlequin in there. Good luck finding those. <laughs> but over here, uh, we got these. Oh wow! Uh, maybe like two months after we got the rack set up, and they've already been breeding because we started with 20, and there's probably 30 to 40 right there on the food pile. Those and you are... can tell anything under like two centimeters is born in the tank. Wow, those are gorgeous. And those orange or yellow, what, what what's the name of that rabbit snail? Just there? the orange rabbits. I, I'm not okay. sure exactly if very. they're poso or, or what they are. but The shrimp are very cool. I mean, they're a little different than the uh, cardinal ones you see. Yeah. And then so, on the, 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 as we get harder, I mean, again, Sulawesi. Won't find much shrimp in here, but over here we've got the white orchids. Oh, you so, have white orchids. And these ones are breeding as well. Wow, that is awesome to see. I've never seen, uh, I've never seen a lot of the varieties, but I've never seen this species even uh, with the white orchid shrimp. And I'm searching here because they blend in well. 
But here we've got one crawling up the back. Whoops, sorry about that. Focus. We actually had someone come from Brazil and get these off of us and make it all the way back to Brazil and breeding them in Brazil. Someone flew in from Brazil. Twice, yeah. For these shrimp. Not, well, one sorry. time just for these shrimp, yes. Wow, incredible. And are these any different lines of rabbit snails in all of these? or So these are yellow up here and then I got the orange up top. Okay. And then we have the blue-legged uh, posos, Sulu essay shrimp in there. These are also breeding. Wow, so, wow, they're buried. This one is anyways. But look at that berry on there, that is cool. They've got very long rostrums and very gonzo uh, googly eyes, but very cool. So you must be keeping them very happy if right. they already are having babies. And again- These were the newest ones we got too. These are the newest ones yes. you got. So people can do an entire Silhouette biotope or oriented you know, tank. I think there's something like 60 species now that they've found in the in the shrimp world living in the lakes of Sulawesi. So, also the, one of the reasons why I like to keep the rabbit snails is yeah. because the shrimp, they're super shy. Like, they're the, one of the hardest shrimp that like, like I, I say don't even bother with these. We've got so many tanks to cover yeah. and stuff like that. But, um, the main reason is in the wild, like even to catch them, people are flipping over rocks and then shaking them off to oh, catch wow. them and stuff like that. But there's so many fish that they, they're always so scared that they're going to be hunted and they're so small and whatnot. But they use the snails as like an alert system. If the snails are happy and out of their shells and climbing around, then the shrimp think that there's no fish alive or around, around. so that way they can come out, climb, and be happy. Wow. So having the snails in the tank make the shrimp more active and less shy and come out a lot So more. it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. Absolutely. Very cool. And there's nothing like seeing a shrimp riding on snail. No, that's very cool. In the next spot, which is where we started, and Shelby is working on... Uh, Mecca Splendids, my butterfly goodies. They are beautiful and they are in the back here. Yeah. I'm trying to get rid of them out, but they are shy as can be. So. That's really neat that you're keeping goodyids because these are a a fish that in this genus of many fish from Central America and uh, Mexico, a lot of these fish have gone completely extinct. But it's people like you who are hand feeding them bloodworms every day that is why these are being saved. So uh, you said you have some tequila ones yes. that we'll be looking at, but some of these fish that Shelby's keeping are actually being saved from complete extinction in the wild and because they've been in the hobby they've been reintroduced back to the wild i believe it's nine goodyids alone species wise and counting so what else do we have going on in this line here that you're feeding now um so i do have some more long thin uh albino plecos oh well, they're very pretty they almost look like the arctic white ones gorgeous they're, they're very super nice. friendly and they come to the front too very cool. That's a nice trait for plecos because mine like to hide all the time. Threadfin rainbows. Let's see if they even eat these. Oh yeah, threadfins are also beautiful. Um, I unfortunately got all males in that tank except one female, but they are still beautiful and living all together in peace. We also have a um, multiplatus trifisiatus. That's a mouthful for sure. Yes. <laughs> He's in there too, in there somewhere. He's only this big. Like, right on. And then you told me earlier that these happen to be your shrimp. Yes, they are my red pintos. These are incredibly beautiful shrimp here, and there's a lot now. So where would someone go to get these? Because I, I hear there's a little more than just going to the Garden of Eater uh, shrimp site. To get these so what yeah. would someone tell you if they're like i need those beautiful beautiful shrimp that you bred you can contact us on our facebook the garden of eater okay or Grant, for sure <laughs> right on okay and you guys also do live streams together as a couple yeah. too every monday and that's at nine o'clock eastern time and then we do a live stream wednesdays at 10 p.m right eastern. on so also going on all around you we kind of talked about it earlier but you've got these beautiful, are these the wapogas here? Yes, the dwarf. The wapoga dwarf rainbow fish. And they're like about the size of a praycox rainbow fish, a little slender, more slender. Um, 
and she's feeding them good quality food I mean and look at that beautiful shimmer they it, it's hard to see sometimes That's, but one one rummy nose blair eye in there and beautiful though these fish I think are gonna get really popular in the hobby uh, they seem a little newer and people seem to already be uh, looking for them all They're over hard to come by that's for sure yeah okay so this is another beautiful school of rainbows yeah. and this is the praycox yes the yes, dwarf <laughs> red and wow as they're, you're feeding them animals well i haven't even put food in because <laughs> they know it's feeding time when i have to move the duckweed around to feed them so they're like oh it's feeding time right on so that's really neat though that they're that animated you know a lot of people think oh they're just silver but they have so much more color oh in God. them and so much of the stuff you guys keep has like these secrets as you watch it just more comes out and people should really give these a chance if they haven't checked them out they stay small enough that they're not and you don't have to wait forever like with some rainbow fish for them to look you know very nice so what's over here that I see, you know, the envy of many people having like 70 or whatever's in here, CPDs. Oh yeah, uh, CPDs and our albino quarry cats that do not stop breeding. Wow, we so... Two full tanks of babies. Two full tanks of baby albino yeah. quarries. Those are probably the Aeneas if, if they're like most of the albino quarries in the hobby. And then CPDs, one of my favorites from the Shan region. Of, uh, of Myanmar uh, from Lake Inlay. Unfortunately, there's a war going on there, and so what's being bred in the hobby is so important, and the genetics being good is so important. So it's really cool to see you guys, you know, keeping things like this. Will those be available on the site at some point? Yes. Okay. And those will probably be some of the first ones we get on the site. Cool. Um, those, the dwarf neons, and then those ones might have to wait those are a little bit more special to me all right so now i mean we've got a kitchen we've got there's so many things to cover and we're just inside where are we headed next shelby uh the big rack the That's big rack <laughs> the rack this is scully and agent Mulder over here these are my alien betas so i had to pick, pick a name good for them where are they yeah, hiding the oh right up to the glass yeah beautiful They're very friendly beautiful fish that he's stoked to have blood worms oh yeah now how often do you feed this guy blood worms um, i don't feed them blood like once a week usually okay um most of the time they get a bug pro that is what they like the most so other than alien bettas what else is going on on this crazy what are there like a hundred tanks 110 here gallon tanks on this a hundred ten gallon tanks not enough apparently not enough <laughs> I took too many of them for my fish tanks, so that's what we're building the big rock in the middle is to start moving some of the fish tanks now that these tanks are good and cycled for his shrimp. <laughs> right on. So, so what else in here? We got my Turkish chilies down here. Turkish? Yep. They wow. are beautiful. They have never a blue to them. Well, they are super shy too, so they usually tend to sit around the bottom. That's why I have oh, bottom yeah. mops. I see and the beautiful blue. Oh, so you put your spawning mops on the bottom with these ones. Yes, so there is a lot of bottom dwelling killer's fish, just like those um, uh, fungulus singularis at the Yeah, okay. In the hallway. They like to be at the bottom more. I so. see them hiding, but yeah, they're so yeah. shy. They, me, me pointing just made them hit the deck. I'm, yes. I messed it up. It's okay. <laughs> so. Other than them, I mean, you've got every color shrimp in the world around here, and we'll get to that, but. What is this beautiful creature? Those are... I'm in love. Yes. I cannot pronounce them. Fungula pangax suggesti, which are uh, blue galaris is the more common name. Right. So these one, there is a female in here. She will come out soon. They are super friendly together. She is beautiful. And no, she is hungry for blood worms. She is beautiful too. I have seen the blue galaris and... You know, the males are not the only pretty one. Now, how long, do you know how long these ones tend to live usually? Um, I believe they, they live a lot longer. So um, they're not, yeah, they're not just like a one year or several yeah. month kind of fit, kind of killie. They're another. This one's about three or four 
three to four, I believe. Wow. They get way bigger. This is three this to is four young. years. This yeah. Is young. They get like five inches. And, and these are from one. Western Africa originally. They're really beautiful. And I mean, I know there's so many variations of those West African killies. So um, you could collect killies forever, probably, yeah. with the amount that are out there. Oh, yeah. Now, what else is going on in this huge, I mean, echoing room, it's so big, of racks, though? What other things do we have going on? I mean, I see long fin danios, I see short fin danios, I see rice fish, and what, so. What's, what are some of your favorite things going on here? I'm sure we can't keep. We have leopard, the high fin platies, crescent platies. Oh, they're very babies. Cool. Very you cool. See them. Yeah. We have two tanks of those. Those are really cute. I love baby platies. Mm -hmm. Do they have the little ring around their eye like sometimes babies do? Let's see. Oh, these ones have the darker eyes. But yeah, I love little platies. They're just, they look like little toys almost. Mm -hmm. So what was this called again, the type? That's a high fin crescent platy. A high fin cre crescent platy, and I'm trying to get the side view of you, little mm -hmm. buddy. But they've got kind of a, a peach color or red color, and then a white center. Is that? Yeah, their bellies are usually like white, and then it's they almost look like a sunset the way they are. The real yeah. red, white, and orange. The babies are hard to tell, but the the parents are usually a lot easier. They're right down there. Oh, tanks down. The parents are. Oh, I see them, and they've kind of yeah. got the little Mickey Mouse tail, huh? Yep, there's babies in that tank still with them. I didn't get. Oh out. yeah, yeah. This one is a weird color. Yeah, so they it's must like have <laughs> some interesting color morphs. Uh, yeah. Must be thrown from these, these are two. These are chains, metalhead snakeskin guppies in here. They are. Oh. Gorgeous. They're to die for. Wow, look at the finish on them too. They're really pretty. So these are. One more time, the name. They're metalhead snakeskin guppies. Metalhead snakeskin guppies. That tail is just incredible with the, the lines on it, yeah. and that's a female. Yeah, that's so the the, here comes, right here comes the male. Yeah. Wow, I'm what a beautiful up. show we're getting here. <laughs> those are incredible. I'm gonna have to buy some of those from you. Those are crazy. I hope you breed lots of those. Me too. <laughs> so what else is going on? I mean, we've got there so many fish here. My, those are the tequila goodies. Oh, these are the ones that went completely extinct out in the wild. And people say they're just a boring little fish. I don't think they're boring. I think they're really cool looking. And they've got a lot of personality in a group. Like Super friendly. One of my favorite fish. And the male that becomes dominant a lot of times is the one that gets really colorful. Yeah. Uh, and I see. I think I see him, yeah. There's one right there. There's another. See the yep. orange on the tails? Beautiful. So let's see if you can get these. These are... Beta, I can't pronounce it. Edith. Edith. Edithia. Edithia. I don't know. Different, uh, <laughs> Named after Edith, apparently. Some somebody's wife, I would guess, or ichthyologist. About it's a woman. Them, but they are mouth brooding. Oh, very fish. cool. Okay, so Love mouth brooding right fish. Out. Oh they yeah. Like that. So another one of the beautiful wild bettas. I'm sure their color changes. I see metallic blue. I see stripes and dots and kind of yellow eyes. Wow, that's really cool. So and they already bred for me. And they already bred for you. Mm -hmm. yeah, so did you have to take nice. the babies or did they take nope. care of them? So they kept them right in there. I don't know why. Like <laughs> they didn't attack them. I just I wasn't expecting them to have babies that fast. So <gasps> very cool. In the tank and there's several of them guarding around one day. So I see more fish. I mean, uh, the more good eats. Um One thing that's really particular about me is I try to buy any care species. Very um, cool. So you're so into saving. Option, yeah, you're I into, really want it. <laughs> you're into saving the endangered fish of the world, which is so admirable. Are these two different kinds? Um, so they are. They look exactly the same. So these are really hard to. Good eats are um, kind of difficult. Um, you have to know their location. Yes, yeah. Um, so that's that's what all this jumble is on these all tanks the because I'm not very good with remembering Well, things. you got like 300 <laughs> tanks around this property, so I mean, I, I yeah. I definitely want to remember them and take care of them to the best of my ability. And you've also got like Pink Panther or Pink Flamingo Crips in there with yeah. them just just cuz you don't you're not stunting enough, you're not you're not showing <laughs> off enough with your tanks. Oh no, no. 
all. That's so cool though. <laughs> and then just to, to remind folks, like in between everything, there's something else interesting. So you need to check out their channel to really appreciate like some of the strange and wonderful, beautiful, rare stuff that they are keeping here. It's really cool. So more Goodyids again, and that's the San Marcos, which is another one that has been in the news lately. But I'll let you guys Google that to find out more info on that because oh, there's a whole story that's great. So what else do we need to see before we check out other things? Fish, Holy smokes, that looks like a snakehead almost. I mean, it's like incredible. that is a beautiful fish. I don't know if. Yeah, I, I think this tops the blue galaris, and you know the female, she's she's there, she's pretty, um, but that male is something else. I mean, that looks like a tropical reef type fish, okay. and we've got more Achilles next door, huh? Yes, this is their Pantia Panchak Sakurami, which is like the Golden Wonders, but it's not. It's before them, so a lot of people speculate on that, but got those from Bill Shields. So oh, very cool. That's actually the female that's really pretty. Oh, that—that's the fe in in this yeah, one. The, the female is the colorful one. Yeah. Um, oh. The male's even more gorgeous when I get him. Wow. And of course, I have my annual, so the Northria Brinkus Gunthrai Zanzibar. Oh, the Zanzibar. Who doesn't love those? Very cool, and they are a beautiful one too, with a lot of red in them, and just I mean, cool markings. Now, how long do these live? Oh, these are short-lived. They don't have very long that they live. I believe it's one to two years. One to two years. So you, a lot of people suggest that you get them breeding as fast as you can to keep these around because they are not very common. So yeah, one of those ones that I already have the peat moss in the tanks ready to go. Um, so hopefully, very cool. Get something. So you got peat moss in the cups in the bins mm -hmm. for them. And they'll lay eggs, and then you have to dry those eggs out for. Uh, two to three months. Wow. Wow. That's some dedication. Mm -hmm. Very cool. You see people with bins, hundreds of bins, the people that go really die hard. Uh, yeah. Even more blue galaris. I have two males in that tank. More beautiful blue galaris. Very cool to see. So, oh, and we've got some little uh, rockets, as I like to call them. I know they're, I know they're clown killies. I hate that name. I'm going to call them rocket killies. But beautiful. I've bred those sporadically, but never had luck with like continuous breeding. So, have you tried breeding those ones yet? Not yet. I just got those. I put them up in there, but I have not. What I believe in those, they need a smaller tank and more coverage. The more coverage I give Achilles fish, the better they do, and I get them breeding. So. Very cool. So, to finish off, kind of talking about all the fish that are in in this area, mm -hmm. what else do people need to know that's going on here? Um. So I do have. So one more thing we need to check out is something we can't pronounce. Holy cow. So that is a native killifish here again. And you're doing the good work of preserving, you know, the biodiversity and what is going on natively right around you, which is so cool because you live in such a beautiful area with so many creatures. So thank you for showing us this big old wall of fish. We'll have to go over the shrimp next. Yeah. Just the anacris alone in this hot tub though this year has paid for the electric bill to run this entire system. Wow. And these fish are so entertaining. I mean, I don't know, it would bring me so much joy to have something like this. That little one right there is one of my own uh, fry. From, and, so you're know, breeding them, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's got the most personality. It like goes <laughs> up to the surface and like just like that little orange the, one, or uh, it, it, as soon as I try to point it out, it of course, water. of I course. Um, well, there's some really pretty ones, and there's even one that kind of looks like the Japanese. Uh, or, I can't remember the name of them, so I don't want to butcher it either. But it's got the dot, the red dot on the head, kind of, or the red head pattern that you know is so desirable. And here is the little, is this the little male? Yeah. The little male uh, terrapin, uh, beautiful little blue squirtle turtle. Very cool. And, and in case anybody wants to just look at live bears instead, 
You could also do like 10 million live bears in your pool. I mean, that would work too. Yeah. Some of those mall or some of those sword tails are quite large compared to the others. They're they get big when you give them room, and that's another awesome it's not thing. Even full grown. I think some of the swords yeah. are like six inches. With so. the, yeah, I, I bet. I mean, the females get big on those things. And then also you've got bacopa growing out of the pot. Do you water that pot generally with? This the water from all these yeah, systems. Yeah, it's and, not raining. I will, but it's right. been raining so much. I haven't had to water that. In two okay, months. and so you've got this tarp over the top of everything. Yeah. Uh, because it, the Florida sun is just too intense today. It's cloudy, and it's still a lot of UV light, as you guys can see. But this green water is also like liquid gold. If you wanted to raise like CPD fry or anything, I yeah. mean, it's it's full of healthy life. I mean. Just like humans love spirulina and they call that like a wonder food or super food. Well, with fish, they love algae, but a lot of times people don't love putting it in their tanks in the house. So consider a pool yet again. These yeah. ones are more like my pets and I overfeed them. Yeah. And like just the koi we got from Wessie's, uh, Rusty's house. Yeah. The triple crown was a little over a month ago. And the koi have already quadrupled in size. Wow, quadrupled so they're, they're in a month. already ready to about to go into the new pond, but because of all the anacris up there, I haven't been able to catch them and move them down yet. That is so cool. I love this so much. I could sit here all day and watch the turtle too. Just it's got so much like goofy, fun behavior of hiding under the plants and that beautiful blue color. Thanks for sharing a, this with us again too, man. No Very problem, cool. Man. All right, so here we are in yet another room. Seems to be a fish room disguised as a bedroom. What's going on here, Grant? What's what's the story? So this used to be my original bedroom. However, having two kids, son grows up, he eventually wants his own bedroom. So this was all already here before we added the rail and everything like that to make it a safe bed for him. That's cool. Through in the AC unit, because this room does get the hottest during the summer and the coldest during the winter time, so we can kind of temperature control things in here, but we do have three 55 gallon tanks, three 40 gallons, and then another 36 10 gallons in here. Wow, 36 more tanks in here. So what is the what is the plan going on here? Like, what is mostly in here? Is this is this Neos? Is this Caradinas? What's going on? So the bigger tanks are for the Neo Caradinas. However, we do have some Tangerine Tigers up top. Everything else is going to be Caradina. We do have one little tiny Oklahoma tank hanging on. I've been trying to get all of those out of here. And those are the volcano shrimp from yeah, Hawaii, from, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So one of the things that happened when we came home from Triple Crown is I came to do a checkup on the entire house, came into this room, stepped in about two inches of water. Oh man. And so that's why everything's kind of out of here right now. Yeah. 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 So everything in this room's got to go. We're building a brand new rack to hold 90 10 gallon tanks. All the tens will go out on that new rack. And then the 55s and 40s will go out in the garage and Shelby will turn those into fish tanks. Wow. And so as I look in each of these tanks, I see just so many different lines, so many different beautiful shrimp. So are these also a progression of genetics in here or what's how are they it's, organized? It's kind of like a mix mash of everything. Okay. I, I've just had this rack done for so long that you get tired of one type of shrimp or you need to move some things around and it, it's kind of hard to keep things nice and organized. Gotcha. So, I mean, like what are these beautiful, like with the orange tail and the yellow head and vice versa, I mean. So the, those ones right there with the yellow heads, those are the lemon, uh, lemon heads. And then the reverse with the clear head and full body, I call those the headless horsemen but they're just a different phenotype of the yellow King Kong. And there's even a Riley ver variety in there too, but it takes a $3 shrimp and turns them into a $25 shrimp. Wow, so what else stands out to you in here that's like that? Do we have other? Uh, some of the, the big Showtime ones are the uh, orange-eyed blue tigers. Of course, and they've got a little bit of algae, but they are shrimp, so that's great. But of course, we've got the beautiful blue color you guys can see there that's striped and then they've got orange eyes, which is pretty self-explanatory if you've seen them before. And then we've got the green jades. The green Holy smokes. are always a big one. 
And because there's so many coals to the green ones, I can't really breed these as nice as I want to outside. There's always some ugly ones in the back that are like making, you know, a good chunk of the babies and then those babies make ugly babies. So these are inside, your quote unquote can... ugly ones. No, no, no. These, <laughs> okay. these ones are nice ones. The ugly ones are down here. Okay. I was like, wow, those are high end for ugly ones if I've ever seen it. But it, it's just really hard to remove the ugly ones when they're in a 500 gallon tank. Of course. Of so course. not all of them in there are ugly, but like I said, the coals are going to breed. So I like to keep the nicer ones in there. But I'll never sell those as, you know, the normal grades on the website. So the gold line on the green is undesirable? No, no, no. It's, it's wanted. Okay. Uh, the green emeralds, which are up here. Okay. They don't have the back line. Some of them do. I do have a wow. line where I'm working on the back line itself. And then I do have another, if you see that one. It's kind of like orange on camera, but like to the eye, does it not look red? It, it does. It does, it does look very red, and yet on camera it does look a little orange. But that is bizarre, that came from the green line, huh? Yeah, not, nothing in there is crossed, it's all pure green emeralds. Looks like there's another, oh wait, no, I'm looking at rocks, ignore that. Wow, and so, is there anything else in these giant tanks, or you're just doing shrimp? Just, just shrimp. Shrimp, on yeah. top of shrimp, on top of shrimp. Yeah. And what we were looking at from an angle earlier, again, we've got more, these are tangerine tigers. Yeah, those are tangerine tigers. Now are these, I mean, how close to what you'd find in the wild of a serrata are these? Are there yellow ones in the wild or? No, they're, they're kind of like splotchy with a little bit of red, orange, or blue color, or hue, and then some of these selectively bred the orange out, the blue out, or what you see as the tangerine tigers and the aurora blues. Gotcha. Okay. Well, very cool. And then what's what's going on at the very top? Just more assorted shrimp then? Yeah. Yeah. We, we've got cheetahs, hybrids, uh, red uh, Michelin's with the red King Kongs also in there. Uh, red steel or blue steel and red steel coals. These are the Thai bees that I'm trying to make into fancy tigers from scratch where <laughs> wow. I cross pure red line and red tigers together. I'm doing that again in this tank. We got some zebra belt babaltis up here, but Very I good. haven't really had these for too, too long and I have to move the tank. So. Those are an interesting one. Um, that's kind of hard to film sometimes because of their such size being so small and their stripes. In here, this guy wants to hide in the moss, but I see them. I see them. They're all there and look at this. It's a secret world going on here. And what were these called again? So most of them are red tigers as the, as the bigger ones without any stripes, but I threw in a pure red line to start making more of the tie B crosses. And when they have the red and the black, that's what that's called? Those are the tie Bs. That's, that's you seeing the, the pure red line pigment coming out. Do you have a name for that then? They're just tie Bs right now. Okay. All right. On to the next. We are in another bedroom. Suspiciously girly and young on one side and incredibly ornate and beautiful full of mostly caradina shrimp it appears to be but Grant tell me about yet another amazing shrimp filled room. So as soon as COVID hit we didn't have any fish club meetings and as soon as we were open back the first club meeting was a swap meet. One of the regulars came to the table and was like, hey, Jaden, how many tanks do you have in your room? And he's like, oh, 43. And he goes, Layla, how many tanks do you have in your room? And she's like, none. And I'm like, Layla, you want tanks in your room? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, what do you want? She's like, a rack like Jaden's. And I'm like, <laughs> so I can get, you know, shrimp tanks and all in, in your room? And she's like, hey, and one tank for fish. Which? So, <laughs> oh, we should have turned it on. It's okay. Um, but, yeah, she does have some rice fish. But the rest of the tanks, there's 36 10 gallon tanks. It's the exact same stand that's in Jaden's room. However, we did paint it to make it a little bit nicer for her room. Yeah. And then um, all of them are Caradina to keep it nice and simple. So we got 150 TDS water, five to six GH, zero KH to make it nice and simple. I'm actually in the middle of doing water changes right now. So that's why there's some of the water uh, evapor not evaporated, but lowered, and the lids are half crank. I finished the top row and some of the tanks on the bottom row. And just like most your shrimp tanks, you've got what is substrate? Everything in this room is all Brightwell 
uh, uh, Scuro. Okay, and then the sponge filters, really affordable. Folks could pick those up, eBay, Amazon, and they work really well. The other thing I like to do is I pull off those sometimes, and I'll squeeze them out yeah. into a new tank or what. But it's nice because those are modular. Uh, and one will definitely restart another shrimp or whatever tank, yeah. give them some food. So I love those for nano fish and shrimp. So what's the story of the shrimp in here? Like what are we dealing with? So the top row I have for the majority is tiger shrimp, but all pure lines, not a lot of crosses. And then we've got everything over here starts to get into some of the nicer shrimp. We've got Shelby's Pintos in here. They're kind of thriving and booming. She's yeah. got three tanks of these throughout the house. We've got one of our Blue Bolt tanks. These guys actually survived Hurricane Irma when the hurricane hit, knocked our power out for 21 hours. I was down to two shrimp. So all the shrimp in this wow. tank and this tank right here all came from that hurricane. And they're and then, beautiful. They're really nice. That's and then awesome. basically everything else in the room are all on project tanks, and I'm sure we're going to dive more into that in the next film. Awesome. So these are really beautiful, and just as a sample, I mean, we'll get into this in other videos, but I mean, what we're talking about, if you're curious how these shrimp are created, we've got a beautiful line here, and then you work your way across. The black ones and the red ones, they're related, you know. Then you get wine colored ones. You get all sorts of different things that pop out of Caradina shrimp. They're not really like Neo Caradina. And that is what's so amazing. And people like Grant are the only reason that people like me who don't want to put this much time and effort into it can actually keep these shrimp in a lot of different water conditions that in the past everyone thought of these as shrimp that you basically breathed on and they would pass away. But Grant and a few other people in America are working really hard on just making incredible shrimps with incredible genetics out of these caradinas. So let's continue the tour and you guys are gonna be amazed by what else we see in this house. And then you gotta tell me one more time about these guys. I'm just so uh, interested in this one with the metallic blue on its head and the black band around its tail. What What's going on there? So these are my Tang Tai. The original cross is Tangerine Tiger with Shadow Panda and that is the exact same for the next four tanks so, and then bottom two. So the next four meaning this way? Yep. Okay. And in here, I mean, you get interesting kind of uh, blue and white almost. I mean, almost blue bolt looking shrimp and yellow. So you've got yellow and blue coming out of the same line and here you get some even like greens and yellow with... So I've left the ones that are greens but the yellows originally came out of here and then I culled any tang tie and yellow looking shrimp into this group and then the ones that came out really yellow I've been moving into this group. Okay. And I have another group inside the house where I've been focusing on just yellow. So do you do you scoot then generations back ever if you no. get a good color? You would keep it separate. You're not yeah, going to go so back and mix even a potential split that happened, say, in this tank. If you find a beautiful yellow one over here, it has the genetics of this tank, this tank. And so even though it would look good with these genetically it could throw something weird and so you're avoiding that by progressively generationally and phenotypically putting a new tank up for each of these morphs huh? so i'll move shrimp from this tank into this tank this okay. tank into this tank so like one hop. this one into this tank but it never goes backwards yes so these are like my highest grades and then so forth and so what but then these ones this is a high grade tank, this is my low grade tank. I never move these into those phenotypes either. And these are related to those as well? Yep, yeah, yeah. so it's just two different directions. So these are the back lines, and if you can see, like there's some that have the gold back line, and yes. some that have the blue. But if you look up here, I've got some that really have a nice gold back line. Yeah, that one definitely that, has like a... Yeah. That's like a steel, but there's there should be another one running around. But then I have another tank where I've just focused on the gold and white. And there's some yellows that, that have that nice kind of skeleton yeah, of gold. I'm trying to make my own Galaxy Pintos, but like, if pride and joy are the green ones. Yeah, they're really nice. You know, that is very similar color. Um, now, would this be similar to like an Incredible Hulk when people were talking about those? No, because or those? Incredible Hulk is a pure 
uh, Taiwan Beauty okay, so hybrids. No tangerine and, uh, tiger. Incredible Hulk's all turn black when they're fully mature. Okay. The green and blue pigments from Blue Jelly and Green Hulks, they're just in, un, uh, unmature pigment. Okay. And when it ages, they all solid up and turn into black. Very interesting. Very cool. Um, and then. These red guys on the far end, they're not related, are they? No, too? these are my pure red lines. Okay. Uh, I've been breeding these from like five or six different like big time breeders, Asian and German. I know that and double I've been spot. Working on them in my own, you know, way. So these are the TGOE pure red line that wow. are in high demand. I never really sell babies on the website anymore because I'll have somebody like you come over to the house and they'll they'll see smaller ones and they want to. But real quick, you got to come see the star of this tank decided to show. So if you like see it come on a good day, you'll see five different colors on this one shrimp. You'll see blue, gold, black, blue, purple, white. Wow. Yeah, you can see it on the tail. And uh, I mean, even on these babies, you can see like green head and blue body. It's very interesting stuff. Wow, the genetics so are, are wild on this. I mean, they like also when it's backlit, you'll see like yellow, but then you look at it up close and it looks like white or even like a soft green. And yeah, it's just, they're a very, uh, they're a very um, interactive shrimp in the sense that like if you got them, you'd constantly be marveling at what they're up to and what they put out and the different versions that are all created from these genetics. It's very cool. The rarest shrimp in Grant's Menagerie. What 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 is it? What are we looking at? So these are Hummel. They're a wild type shrimp from Finland. Finland. And as far as I know, I got these shrimp from a breeder who no longer keeps them anymore. I bought the colony okay. off of him. I sold them to one other person since I've been breeding them, and well, they didn't do very well with the lines. So before I sold any more, I had broken these out into two separate lines. So I have two tanks going on in the house, but uh, I still don't want to sell any more of them because I feel like I could break them off into like three different phenotypes. Oh wow, those are beautiful. So they kind of look like a raccoon. And they've got this or, like metallic or like, a, or like iridescent. A like. super princess bee or like the two of them crops together. Yeah. But like, you gotta look at, can you pick are up you, the are these larger ones are, in the back? Are these a caradina at that all? Is? So they, I'm not sure if they're a Caradina or a Paracaradina. Okay. But they, I have been trying to cross them with a Yellow King Kongs and no luck so far. And they're a wild one that you got from a guy in Finland? Uh, so they're a wild type shrimp from Finland. I got them from a guy in New York who so they can got out of the normalized shrimp and just uh, started focusing focusing on orange eyes. What's with this? So, what's with this tangerine guy or I'm King Kong? I'm trying to cross the yellow King Kongs with them to yellow figure King out Kongs. if if it's doable. But okay, they, they've been together, and I also got a another Hummel in the yellow King Kong tank, and there's never been anything odd pop up. So. Wow! So these are Hummels. Okay. And I do have another tank of these on the hundred. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Look at that blue. It turns colors. Yeah, they're like blue, purple. Uh, Shelby's favorite shrimp are the raccoons. No way, these are uh, so much. Uh, sorry, Shelby. Uh, <laughs> these I are think insane. These are a little bit nicer. Yeah, that is so. It's a shame cool. the food pile went to the back. Let me move that part. Okay, back. let's move the food pile to the front. Edit. Bread something. Now I can use that money to pay for the next thing. Yeah. So I. You're very I protective I of these, too. I, I can understand. But I'm like at the point where I could let some of these go, but like before I sold them for 15 bucks a piece and the no person way. just didn't take them serious enough, so wow. I'll, probably, I'll probably be jacking these up to 25. The color, I mean, that is wild with the blue turning to purple, but right before your eyes. It's like sky blue to electric blue to purple with like this crazy... Maroon. Yeah, almost red even yeah. with certain lights. It's, it's That's so cool. And, and then, then there's, there's some of them that get like white white and, and black bars. Wow. Right? They're, they're such a weird phenotype shrimp. Wow, we gotta unravel these. What temperature do you keep these at then? Are they anything so special? The, no, this whole room is the only room in the house that has the AC unit because it gets so hot here in the summer. Okay. It's actually a porch that we added onto the house as a bedroom. Okay. So it, we keep what, the room at about 72. And what, what water parameters are in this tank here? Anything 100. special? 150 TDS, 5GH, 0KH, 
And this is like one of my oldest Caradina tanks. So the substrate is at 6.4. Okay. Uh, it's right at the limit I'd like to keep them at. Wow, very cool. As if all the other rooms and racks were not enough, and you know, the kitchen, Aquascapes, <clears throat> my Dr. Pepper, sponsor me Dr. Pepper. Uh, we are going into the final layer, the bedroom, which of course every room in the house and out of the house has tanks, but we're going into the final room now. All right, so here we are in the final room. It looks like you you kept a little room for entertainment and uh, normal human activities, but shrimp yet again take over your life and the house. And uh, from ceiling all the way to floor, uh, you know, these look like uh, husky racks or something from Lowe's. Is that what these are? or So the, the quick story about this yeah. is Shelby and me did some spring cleaning. She moved some stuff around. We got rid of one of the dressers and mm -hmm. she's like, all right, you know, there's about this much room. Uh, we've got like $75 in the budget. You can go to Home Depot, get one of the stands. We can put some st tanks in the bedroom. <laughs> At first, she had a couple rules. One of the rules was no tanks in the bedroom, yeah. no tanks in the bathroom, no tanks in the kitchen. As of today, the <laughs> only rule that doesn't hold up still is no tanks in the bathroom, but she's the one that wants to put a mud skipper tank in the bathroom. <laughs> All right. And so, for clearance, I'm going to save some privacy, but for clearance, yeah, maybe three and a half, four feet actually, but then it's wall, and then your dresser and stuff, and yeah. then it's a wall. But she sent me $75 to Home Depot. They had these on clearance for $75. Oh. They're usually like way over $100. Yeah, they're $100. like, you're like 280 bucks usually, or 250 I think they're like bucks. I dollars 60 here, or it's $175. Oh, okay. Seattle's just more really, expensive yeah, always. It depends where you're at. But um, they, they were on sale for 75 bucks. And I got it, I got it home and I just started putting it together and I got like three tiers of it put up before yeah. Shelby realized what was going on and she's like, what are you doing? Hold on, first of all, we agreed on $75. There's no way this was $75. <laughs> I had the receipt ready. I was like, here you go, showed her the price and everything like that. And then she's like, all right, well, it's not gonna fit. And I'm like, not only is it gonna fit, but I can get two, two. of them to fit in there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I had already had it measured up. She didn't even know what was going on. I swindled her into it. And then like her way out of it after I proved to her that it was gonna fit was like, oh, then there's gonna be nowhere to put the TV. So I just went ahead and cleared off a shelf just for the TV. That's why it's, Made a, sure bit, it fit. it's yeah. a little bit taller than yeah. the other rack. And then I flood a lot. So these are the only two tanks where when I do water changes on yeah. these two, I don't leave. I stand here and I fill them up. They also get filled up a lot quicker because of that. Yeah. Uh, that's the aquatic isopod, green emeralds, and yellow King Kong, Malaysian trumpet snail, mixed mosh tank. And then we have Shelby's um, leopard geckos up top. Right because on. Because I can't flood those. So. So we've got the aquatic isopods, which are uh, little critters that live underwater, and they make a good food, but some people keep them just as pets, kind of like, you know, just like uh, seed shrimp and other things like that, the little ostracods that will naturally... I don't know nobody that keeps seed shrimp as pets. No, they keep them in like the little vivarium jars, like, you know, I the, the you. seal a jar for a year and what exists. So, I know. So, when we come in here, we've got just a mix of all sorts of shrimp yet again but we've got some really nice ones everything from uh you know tangerines and king kongs and uh you know what is this guy with the black striping so that that's a dragon blood since this is okay. a king kong hybrid tank anyways i decided to throw him in there just to see if i can't make more because the dragon bloods are one of those like unknown yeah uh, secrets of the hobby still only the breeder who created them Yui in germany knows how they were made um, I believe that there's some yellow King Kong genes in them, so yeah. I don't have a lot of uh, the... Did you buy that one from him? Or, no, no, or no, from no, his no. line? It, okay. Every, all of them came from his line one way or another. Okay. Um, but I, I just decided to crossbreed them. I think I can get more of the black calcios out of them, but with more golden bodies. Now the calcios okay. are right over here. And so they do look similar to calcios. If people haven't seen them, I hadn't seen calcios till I came here. You can see there's almost a metallic. Uh, you can see a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, but 
that's kind of where you get that metallic color sometimes from is when you get this super rich Let's pigment. See how that one's like a little bit more yellow? Yeah. The more high grade ones are supposed to have more yellow on more the color. Yellow. And then black stripes. And then there's red calcios too, Yeah, right? and the yeah. cool thing about, and there's blue ones. The cool okay. thing about calcios is you can also keep red, black, blue, and the red scorpions all in the same tank. And they're not going to crossbreed and make different kinds of shrimp. They're all going to stay true as calcios. They're just going to produce all four phenotypes. Very cool. And so these, are we are these steels or gold bees or the, what are we looking at here? Those are homemade blue steels using blue steels. Aurora Blue Tigers and a Shadow Panda and Missouri. Uh, cross map. Okay, so the Aurora Blues are over here, yeah? Yep. And those are basically your kind of blue, like just like you've got Blue Dreams in, uh, or Blue Velvets or whatever you want to say in the Neo Caradina. And I that, cross those with these. That's the bluest uh, Caradina. The King Kongs are kind of like your golden or yellow ones. And they're supposedly one of Grant's most prolific, which you crossed those that we were the looking Aurora's at. Auroras with these to, to make, make those steels. Okay, so Shadow Pandas and King Kongs through those when crossed? Yeah. Okay. And it usually only takes about uh, two to three generations to make the blue steels. And is that is that due to selection or do you, like does it throw the gene finally after two or three or is it just that it's not good enough till two or three? So the first cross usually comes out all of them Tybee looking so like really low grade uh, yeah like not really too black but uh, in, either if you use Aurora Blues or Tangerine Tigers you still get some like lighter orange or colored shrimp. Cool and so then this is actually a wild uh, Caradina species. And what was this one called again? What was the species? The Super Princess Bee. Super Princess Bee. Sounds like some Mario Kart naming going on here. And uh, we'll talk in another video about genetics and some projects you're working on with these. But then I want to come over here and show you guys the raccoon uh, wild uh, shrimp, which it's still a bit of a mystery what's going on genetically with these, where they came from exactly, um, species-wise. And that is what's interesting, because if you look at all the species that there are of Caradina shrimp, there's a lot that are striped and clear, like yeah. in the wild. So it could be variants from a lot of places. Now again, we've got more Aurora Blues over in here. And if you come down a level, I want to show you guys how nice some of these blue bolts are that they have here. I mean, these are unlike any blue bolts I've really seen. Like, I've never seen anything like this in a pet store, like such nice blue bolts. And I know that, like, because of the way genetics work and rarity and all, the ones that have, like, half white, half blue, like that little baby there, are not technically the highest grade, uh, the, the darker blue ones are, but I love the, the white and blue ones. I think they look awesome. So Grant, what is going on in this tank here? These look like crystal shrimp. Are they just really high grade black crystal shrimp? So you, you, they're, I mean, they're kind of nice. They're not the highest grade black crystals, but they're a pure black line crystal. So that means that they're not going to produce any reds or straight white ones, okay. just black and white. So no shrimp. genetic history of being a quote unquote Michelin or cross back Correct. or any of that. And is that what's going on with these as well, but in no, red? No, these are actually fancy tigers. So these are a Thai bee, which is a bee cross with a tiger shrimp, and they have to be the Caradina Maria tigers to do this So cross. would this be called a galaxy with all nope. those white dots? That's a fancy tiger. So they're always just a fancy so the, tiger, even these, if they have... These are actually a single pigment where the galaxy print is up here. Yeah. These are double pigment. So just like this shrimp has way more coloration, or since we have these these in, in, in the same room together. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, no, never mind. It is the blacks. So okay. the black, you see how much thicker coloration the black pandas are? Yes. Than these. Yeah, than the ones so we were just looking at. That's the double layer of pigment. So these being the... The, the, the red version. Yeah. So the better one to look at is I have the blacks over here. Okay. Same exact thing. So genetics. we come down the line, a bunch of tanks. Same. And see, see how there's some good coloration? And there's going? some that are almost white. Yeah. See how there's like good yeah. coloration? But like if you come right down here to the Galaxy Pintos, they're twice as thick. It's the same difference as the Crystal Shrimp and the Taiwan Bees. And so what's fascinating to me is with all these higher fancy and uh, shrimp, 
you actually can put them together and end up with new and interesting types. So if you want them to always look the same, that's not even necessarily assured with Caradina, right? Like they yeah, may have... So the more expensive the shrimp, generally speaking, the more work that there is involved. And yeah. a lot of that work is culling, getting the ugly ones moved, getting the, the blue steels, the red steels out of there so that way the yeah. more generations of the nice galaxies come out. Wow, so we've got a whole room here of things in progress, things that are good, like the shadow panda, which again, the shadow means the blue on it is coming through pigment wise, and uh, then the panda uh, is the white and black, whereas a King Kong uh, doesn't have white going all the way around in bands. See how these ones just have like the pretty tail and the dots? Such a stripe, not a full. And band. The, the band that goes all the way around the belly or tail, like in this one, that's when you get into the term panda, right? No, so that one, because the belly, the belly band doesn't go in, that's still a one stripe. So, uh, so in order for it to be a to panda, two? the center stripe. Yeah, that's so that's a two stripe. So what, wait, so what? It, what's it called if it has a head stripe that goes around and a tail stripe that goes around, but no center? Uh, it's just a two stripe. Okay, so, that's, so it, that's has to be, it has that, to be the center that stripe. That one's a panda. You see how the belly comes all the way yeah. down and around, where the one right next to it, to the right, yeah. the belly doesn't come all the way around. So it's just a two stripe. So that's why I think people get so confused. I mean, it confuses me because... You can have a striped black one, and it's like, is that a crystal black? Is it a King Kong? Is it a, is it a Pinto if it has head dots? Is it a, you know, and so I think people kind of get overwhelmed, but you don't need to worry about that until you get into the higher level shrimp keeping. And hopefully if you're at that point, you already know more than we're talking about now about these basic uh, genetic things. But I wanted to point out one last thing about this room while we're looking at it, and that is that these have like this herringbone or uh, fishbone, as it's sometimes called, pattern on them where you get the, the kind of stripes on the back and the stripe down the back. Uh, and that is a term that people use, the herringbone, they talk about it, or fishbone, whatever you want to call it, the stripes. But then it's the head having more than eight or nine dots, which makes it, if it has less than that, it's probably going to be called or considered a pinto. If it has over nine, then you're probably going to be calling it a galaxy, so, right? So, not exactly, because the, the pintos, the German pintos, that is a certain type of tiger that makes that pinto. Where these, the okay. galaxy pintos, it it's still like a tie tie bee from a certain tiger, but it's not considered an actual galaxy pinto until it has the nine dots. So if these, it has less than nine dots, it doesn't mean it's a regular pinto because it's not. It's got the wrong tiger to make it like a, a regular zebra pinto. So, so if it has dots on the head, it's it still may not be a pinto. Um, I mean that's what you just said, right? Yeah, but like you were you're talking about the the dots on the head. Yeah. Compared to the ones that don't have the dots on the head being a galaxy pinto, the other ones can still have the dots on the head. It, yeah. it's, it's the tiger is what you really want to describe it as but you can have these the shrimp in here well I'm not the worried about the ones. I'm just They're talking just fish bones so, okay so what I'm just trying to get across though to folks is like how do we name them not necessarily the genetics of this but this pattern on any given shrimp like how would it get named it, that's what gets me and I think a lot of other people confused is like I know you know the lineage here but if you looked at these and had no idea of their background right how would you come up with a name for them so the, the easy all right while we're under the smurf tarp I want to introduce you guys to who's in control of this beautiful paradise outside we got an inside tour that's also very important but right now I just want to show you guys outside and I want to introduce you to Grant and Shelby Hey guys, and do you guys need any other, like how would you like to introduce yourself? What do you want the world to know about this amazing operation, this jungle of life that you've got going on here? Uh, I don't know, we're just running out of room and <laughs> trying to like tackle our dreams one step at a time. So like you're in the basic uh, construction zone of what's going on. So everything's like a disaster right now, but Everything will come together eventually. And it looks pretty darn together. I think you guys have to be probably the top Neo Caradina breeder by volume in the U.S., right? 
number one breeder in the United States that's parasite and fungus free for sure. For sure, yeah, for sure. And I, can claim. I know there's like two or three farms in Florida alone that are bigger and producing more shrimp than us. But they're yeah. coming to me asking me for advice on diseases and stuff, and I'm like, I, I don't have that to have that issue. So right. It's, it's kind of hard to help you with something I don't have any experience with. And in this video, you guys are going to see some amazing things. We're going to talk about this whole setup that's like an entire pool of filtration and plant growth operation and fish grow out shrimp. We're going to talk about inside later. And each of them has like a delicate role that they play like a ballet or like fencing or something where they balance who's good at what and who's into what and yet they have created the Garden of Eater Shrimps website which you guys should go check out. But let's get on with the tour and this part I believe we're going to start with Grant but we'll be catching back up with Shelby uh, when we get back to the inside. But let's kick it off and check out some of the amazing stuff around here. Thanks guys. All right. All right, so we are talking with Grant here about this incredibly lush and beautiful plant system where there's all these immersed plants and there's even like little lizards and frogs and geckos, which I mean, that might be normal to all y'all in the south, but it's super cool to me and really just, it, it really like lets you feel all the life and all the the detail that you have going on in every corner of your setup. So will you tell us how this is actually part of a filtration system rather than just something pretty to look at? Yeah, so we've got a 4,000 gallon per hour pump. It goes into this makeshift little barrel system that I have, a bunch of biomedia in there. There's some bacopa that comes out of the top of that. And then it tees off here, it goes into this 800 gallon above ground pond that has some shiners and some uh, polar blue cichlids in it. But then I also have a little trickle out into the scrow bed it's an eight foot long cow trough. And all oh. I did was put a tarp in it so that way it holds the water. And then I did cut a little hole in the side down there so it can run off into the- is, No, is this like like a, like a landscaping tarp type material? No, it, it's actual pond liner. It's actual, liner. okay, yeah, pond I, liner. I recycled an old pond that I had in the greenhouse at one time. Cool, and what is this plant? Is that cardinal? Yeah. That looks so cool immersed. So a lot of you guys watching probably know already, but in case you don't, uh, this is Crips Boralis, uh red? I believe so. Wow. So again, this is much darker, more burgundy with a little more green or brown, but this is that bright red stuff in my Lake Inlay biotope. And out here we see sword plants, we see- uh, Variegated bacopa. Yeah, beautiful variegated bacopa out here. Uh, and so all along here, there are cool little things, including terrestrial and semi-terrestrial or semi-aquatic mosses. There's some java ferns right here. Java ferns starting. And uh, there's also even a start of the-, the marble uh, clean sword. Uh, well, yeah, oh, wow, yeah, marble clean that, that, sword. That little one that you were hovering Oh, over, okay. That's a little, I was that's gonna, what I thought you were trying to say. Oh, yeah, no, I was thinking about the bulbitis right behind it. Yeah. Uh, but, so he has got one fern, at least, that's an aquatic fern that's working out well. And then, yeah, all these chaining sword plants plus things are blooming. And that's all under this smurferific <laughs> uh, blue tarp. So, and again, uh, Cardinalis lobelia or the scarlet temple plant looks very different when immersed if you're in the aquarium hobby You probably don't even recognize that versus what it can look like aquatically uh, and it's very pretty plus uh, Alter nanthera ranicii out here. Yeah, that's the purple variety. The purple variety is also just beautiful and you get these really cool uh, buds and blooms and all sorts of stuff in here and uh, I just wanted to capture that that's all within the filtration system that he's got set up here. What? So then the water that runs off from the top pond goes into a little grow bed. There's a little bit of a uh, large pothos that I'm going to try and get to grow up the, uh, I don't know, the shade station that goes over the deck. The deck is going to be torn down and we're going to turn that into a little turtle station. And that's an entire does. jacuzzi that you've got down there yeah. that's plumbed with the pool when, like, that's the way it was built, right. correct? So, 
There's a, not a rubber made, but the tough, uh, I don't know. Liner, yeah, or tote. And just cut, so that way the drop off of the water can go in there. And then Shelby's Black Magic Taro plant is growing. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's almost as tall as I am with the, the height of the bucket. And then, yeah, that overflows into the hot tub. And then the hot tub is all connected in one system with the swimming pool. So even though it's not overflowing off into the side, it's still going through all the pumps and pipes throughout the whole pool system. And then overflows out of this, uh, the skimmer. And there's a ton of Anubis growing out of the skimmer. And every little surface in this pond just has cool plants and life growing out of it. I'm gonna give you guys a shot of the hot tub really quick so you can see the full line of the plumbing. Now he also has worked in over here these tubs and everything in the house and don't forget he's got a giant shrimp farm that rings the entire property all the way around here and they actually have shrimp in each one of these 275 gallon totes and in here where we saw the koi and beautiful fish as well as the little turtles. That's where he has the anacris, if we walk around here. So you can see the awesome plant that, uh, I wanna just barely touch it with like a cord here. And let's see if that's the slow one or the fast one. That is the slow one. So, and then here we've got all these different water tubs, which we'll talk about in a whole other video about the beautiful uh, plants he's got here. Um, but just as a sneak peek oh, Very cool, okay, so back to the filtration so then we come around here and all this anacris is growing in here and he's got those young uh, Koi and then other fish that are in here and it's grown so dense and so thick like he was saying he paid for the utilities for taking care of all this. And by the way, I said things look different uh, when they're outside and immersed. Well here, all, other than the leaping lizard, is also what the AR looks like hanging over the edge, as well as some bacopa hanging over the edge all the way down there into the pond, which is very cool. Is this a Boston fern? I have no idea. I've never kept those alive, so they lose their leaves instantly, more power to you. I don't care how humid it is where you live, that's impressive. I don't know what they make those out of other than stuff that falls apart. But that's the full system, that's where we were standing before. And then look at that beautiful black color uh, or very dark green uh, plant. That's a taro, is that what it's you said? Black taro. Magic. Black taro, magic plant. So cool, and is that a banana plant? Yeah. Very cool, So and then that goes all the way up. And then this shields excess light because there's literally so much heat and light in Florida that they kind of got to cu uh, cut that all down a notch. But so there's that, no like hair algae issues in the pond. Uh -huh. If we didn't have this, we would have some string hair algae and issues like that. So what does the, the TDS or air nitrates, nitrites, ammonia, what does that kind of stay at with the way things are now? Ammonia and nitrates are always zero. Zero. I've had to prove that to like three or four people yeah. now. And they're always zero because of how much nutrients are taken up by the plants in the system. Yeah. And then the filter is heavily seasoned. We do kind of like, we don't clean it out with tap water or anything like that, but I do run the pump through it and like shake it out so all the old debris falls out and then it gives time for the new bacteria to colonize again. Awesome. And uh, the TDS though uh, is around 180. 180 yeah. TDS, so that's not bad at all. Do you know what the pH happens to be? No, I don't. Probably pretty close to neutral, I would guess. Maybe a little yeah, above. Yeah, I would say 7.2 to 7.4. 7.2 to 7.4, yeah. that's awesome. And that is the giant uh, pool, uh, I don't know what to call it, aquaculture, uh, aquascaping, aquatic, botanical, ichthyological, and uh, herpetological setup that they have here at Grant and Shelby's place. And, and we also got the self cloning crawfish in here. So those breed and those help uh, um, Do they feed the they terrapins feed. because they, in the wild they eat fiddler crabs. So we're substituting that instead of fiddler crabs. Yeah. Very cool. So it's all a self 
sustained system that they can put their water changes and into there, and everything. There's a ton of wild Neocaridina in there too. There's a ton of wild color Neocaridina in here yeah. too. Probably more than any pet store could ever carry, I'm sure of it. All right, so here we are at Grant's house and we are checking out some of his awesome tubs outside. This would be a dream for me. One, raccoons and skunks and weasels and just all the other little critters that get into things are why I, one of the reasons why I can't do this, but the main reason is because of my climate. <laughs> but this is so cool. So what are we looking at here, Grant? So we got our lighter tail mollies, the tangerine mollies, a bunch of uh, nausea grass, a lily, spider lilies, some red high grass. Very cool. It looks like maybe even a little bit of, is that a uh, mini rotala no butterfly maybe? Is. Looks like it. And then uh, next tub over, and these are, are these all like IBC totes that have been cut into like half yeah. or third or? Yeah. Cool. Um, so in here there's going to be just a couple little oddballs, um, some uh, blue paradise grommies. Oh nice, yeah. Um, you can see the mountain cloud minnow poking in and out, and then yeah. some dwarf brick swords. Um, this is though like our main uh, mystery snail breeding. Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna. I was just gonna ask. I was gonna say I see a relative like high number of snails in general. So I was curious. Oh, that's so cool. They're just totally naturally. So I'll, I'll collect these though, and move them inside. So you'll see that later. Very cool. Wow. So your mystery snails, like, so if someone buys your mystery snails, they're yours then, like, from your tubs probably. So everything live or good on the shrimp side all comes from us and then we are going to be diving into like uh resailing on fish but it's not going to be like imports it's all going to be local uh like people from the clubs and yeah. guys that can't get into shipping that want to bring me at club meetings and then i'll I, I've got some like uh, celestial pearl danios in there that I've already held for. I two saw weeks. those; they look great. Yeah. There's 50 of them. I haven't lost a single one of them, and I'll be putting them up on the website sh shortly. Awesome. You take priority right now. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, are so, you breaking it up after so, every tub, yeah, or is this uh, all one short? We'll we'll just do we'll do all this one streak here probably. Yeah, I can see all the wow. There's some beautiful guppies out here too. So this is also like the oh, mimosa, but you have wow. to flick it away harder, and it moves way, way, way. Slower. So this is a different species then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a sensitive fern, but, but it's not yeah. the Aquatica nepica. It's a giant sensitive fern. Oh man, that doesn't. Really oh, there we go. Choices. Yeah, that is beautiful though. So it just takes oh yeah, you can see it moving now. Up. But the cool thing is, is if you like disturb the roots, yeah. if it rains, it all closes up too. So, so rain will close it yeah. too. Wow, that's awesome. And then you got a different set of uh, lilies in here. It looks like too, yeah, right? So th these are uh, and some mystery dwarf, snails. Dwarf lilies, more mystery snails. I actually pulled a clutch for the first time off of this. Oh, there's another clutch over there too. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a that's a pretty thick clutch too. There's I a told lot of eggs. Today, I'm I'm never gonna have to buy mystery snails again. No, never. <laughs> that I guarantee that with this setup. But and then these are really nice looking too, because outside they get all the vitamin D and E. Uh, in these plants with all this wild food and mosquitoes and stuff like that they get in here I'm sure these are like and the color I mean fish tan just like Just like humans do but with all their colors. So these are the same ones that are in the uh, Mata Mata turtle tank. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Japanese double sword tails and then I have some uh, gold dust mollies. Oh, yeah Those too. are good sized gold dust mollies too. And then what's going on with the plants in the corner? These are just plant bins. Yeah, uh, I've got a bunch of different crypts. Crypts, and yeah. Actually, we shall be planted all these. Okay. And uh, very just cool. Different, uh, yeah, a Ludwigia and then. Uh, and I'm trying to grow out the Monte Carlo so that way. Yeah, that we looks can use great. For escaping. And you're able to the, carpet it that much yeah. out here. Yeah. Wow. And then that's a sword plant, like a. Uh, so this is the the parrot feather. Oh yeah, duster. that. No, I was, oh, yeah, yeah is that like middle. an ocelot? I don't know which one it was. And yeah. It just got uprooted. Wow. Uh, and we have like them in rows, and Shelby has them labeled. So, that really so cool. So, this whole row is just so cool and beautiful. And then in here, we do have some swords going. Oh, yeah. And then this is just Akadama kind of pellet type um, stuff? It is Hydraton. What's what's the name? Hydraton. It's Hydraton. Just okay. Levels. Very cool. So, it's like for. Uh, for for high grow grow yeah right very neat
Oh wow, you, yeah, you do have a good number. And so, do these lids stay on with the sun all, like all day and everything, and with yeah. this tarp? Uh, this or is kind of just temporary. I ran out of room. Uh huh. Uh, I do have another tub. I just haven't gotten around to it. And so. this is this tarp though up in to block sunlight like yeah. most of the days because it would get probably way too hot down here, yeah, right? No, it's always up. And it probably still gives quite a bit of light. Probably still sneaks through that tarp. Yeah. yeah. If uh, oh, and then I see there's tadpoles in this one too. Yeah. So do you know what kind of tadpoles they are? Or are they like volunteer tadpoles? They're volunteer tadpoles. Right on. That's awesome. That's really cool. And uh, again, the beautiful mosaic plant. It's a Ludwigia. I always forget the Latin name on this one, but it's a very beautiful plant. If you need a surface plant, that's a great one. Now, another great one that he was just about to talk about over here, I think. Yeah, it's the same. Is very, very cool. And it doesn't need much touch, but it literally closes. You don't have to flick them, but you got a much Look better Look at result. that. And I'll make a whole episode about the, the, the physiology of the plant that allows for that and the physics, because it's fascinating what a simple mechanism it is, but how mind-blowing that it evolved to do that it the, is. The other cool thing about it yeah. is when it starts to stink, I think this is actually a fungus that it grows to help it oh, float. Probably it's helps like it fix little, nitrogen too then. If it's it, like if a little it, yeah. uh, Cheeto. Okay, so it's like a little mycorrhizal relationship uh, of some sort. Uh, uh, Fungi or bacteria. Popcorn. Yeah, it could be, yeah, it could be like a mycorrhizal like you'd see on legumes. That is so cool. Okay, so then we've got the last of this set of big tubs here. Which, what's going on in here? I see a little bit of everything plant-wise going on. Yeah, a lot of crypts, soils. Yeah, red um, root floaters. These are the, the red uh, lotus, the red tiger lotus. Oh, red tiger lotus, the dwarf. Are they the dwarf or the normal? Yeah, yeah, normal. yeah. Very cool. And then I see, I see some fish trying to say hello. Uh, so most of these are going to be um, tad more tadpoles. Oh, more tadpoles. Okay. I do have, oh, yeah. There we are. I do have some uh, platinum rice fish in here, but only like five of them. Cause I oh, wow. Up, yeah. I ended up buying some of these red root floaters off a guy, and they came in with them. But. Wow. That's that's a little bit of luck right there, hatching yeah. them out. And then you've got more tubs in these, like like whatever they're, 15-gallon or 20-gallon totes? Yeah, I think they're the 15-gallon muck buckets. Wow, that is very cool. And we got more of the, like, myriophyllum growing there. And then, and then we also wow, you got, got so many tadpoles. Yeah. So I'm I'll, excited to, to see what they end up being. Do you, do you no, know no, no, what no. they'll be? So I, I, I wait until, like, this bucket's the next one to go. Yeah. And I need to, before they form into ha frogs, because I think they're the invasive Cubans. Oh. So before this, the, they start to morph and uh, walk out, I, I dump them into the pool. So they get, do they get fed then to they, your turtle and koi and all there's that? There's crawfish and the koi fish. Wow. Sure. So it's, it's really a whole balanced nothing goes to waste. ecological system where yeah everything is balanced. that is really cool thank you for sharing this this uh section of your uh little paradise here very cool thank you so much guys for coming along on this tour now these trips cost a lot of money flying all the way down to florida seeing their amazing setup if you guys like this kind of content, invite me to your local club so I can come out there, check out what's in your region. I'd love to hear what you guys think of this tour. If you made it to the very end, I would love to hear uh, you guys comment. Yes, because I hear comments, but I'd love to hear you, I'd love to see you comment blue turtle or something about blue turtles uh, because those things are so cute. I have so much more footage from Grant's house. And we're going to go over so much more in the near future. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Grant and Shelby. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Like, subscribe for more. And I couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you so, so much. Bye-bye.